I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos from the Uniform Services University. This is a short introduction to contrast enhancement as we use it on MR and CT. Why do we use contrast? Contrast changes a non-invasive imaging technique to an invasive modality that has some risks. Very small, but there are some risks. One reason to give contrast is to increase the sensitivity to enable us to recognize a lesion that is otherwise very hard to see or very subtle. This is a patient that has a very small meningioma. Very, very hard to see on the non-contrast MR scans. However, when we give a contrast infusion, we can readily see the round nodular enhancing meningioma on these T1 weighted images. We also give contrast material to increase the specificity. If we look at this flare image, we can see a heterogeneous lesion on the right side of the picture in the patient's left hemisphere. The characteristics are relatively nonspecific, and the differential diagnosis would be relatively long. When we give contrast material, we can recognize that the enhancement is limited to a small nodule, and that the majority of the lesion does not enhance and is also not surrounded by an enhancing rim. This is the classic appearance of a fluid secreting tumor. These are often called cyst with mural nodule tumors and are generally low-grade primary glial tumors of the central nervous system, WHO World Health Organization grade 1 tumors. What causes contrast enhancement? On a CT scan, when we give an iodine injection, the iodine atoms change the attenuation by directly interacting with the X-ray photon. However, when we do an MR with gadolinium, we see an indirect effect. The gadolinium in the microenvironment changes the relaxation time of water protons. If there is no water, we will not be able to recognize contrast enhancement. As a prime example of this, the bone of the skull, which surrounds the brain, does not have a blood-brain barrier. However, we never recognize enhancement in the bone, even though the gadolinium is in this tissue, because it lacks water. Now, the contrast molecules can be in two different locations after giving an intravenous injection. The contrast can be contained within the vessel. This is intravascular enhancement or the contrast may be outside the vessel, this is extravascular enhancement. So contrast enhancement can be related to the vascularity of a lesion, primarily the blood volume contained within arteries and veins. There are ways to measure the amount of blood flow and the amount of blood volume in a brain lesion, as well as in the normal brain. We can connect these two properties of relative cerebral blood volume and relative cerebral blood flow through an equation to calculate the perfusion and the mean transit time. Imagine that this yellow rectangle is part of the volume of the patient. If we increase the vascularity within this part of the brain, and then if we put contrast molecules within those dilated vessels, we might imagine how that will change the attenuation measured on CT or the signal intensity that we might be able to see on an MR scan. In addition to vascularity, permeability can also produce contrast enhancement. This is related to a special property of the capillaries in the brain called the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier has only selective permeability. Almost any lesion affecting the brain's capillaries will increase the leakage out of these vessels and the contrast will then percolate into the surrounding tissue and produce contrast enhancement. Some people say this is when the endothelium goes bad. So if we now imagine a volume element or a voxel as the yellow rectangle, and we put contrast material into vessels that are freely permeable, the contrast will leak out of the vessels and into the interstitial fluid surrounding the vessels and produce contrast enhancement. So we have two different phases of contrast enhancement, the vascular phase and the interstitial or extravascular phase. And of course, some lesions enhance both because of increased vascularity as well as because of abnormal permeability. 
For example, most neoplasms have increased vascularity as well as having abnormal permeability. The last short topic I wish to discuss is the blood-brain barrier. Again, the unique property of the capillaries within the central nervous system. If we look at a capillary that is outside of the brain, we can see that there are a few red cells inside the lumen, which is otherwise filled with the straw-colored fluid or the patient's plasma. We can see that there are endothelial cells surrounding the lumen, and there is a membrane with small holes, a fenestrated basement membrane that surrounds the endothelial cells and a special functional cell called the pericyte. Now the brain has a different arrangement for these capillaries. Instead of having a fenestrated or perforated basement membrane, the brain has a continuous basement membrane. The brain also has specialized endothelial cells. These endothelial cells form junctional complexes that hold them tightly together. And the last feature of the blood-brain barrier that makes it very, very unique is the presence of the foot processes of the astrocytes that surround the basement membrane of the capillary. The astrocytes are the supporting cells. They're like little stars, and they hold the neurons, the functional cells, as well as form these little processes that engulf and surround the uh, endothelium of the capillaries and the basement membrane of the capillaries. This special configuration only allows certain molecules to exit the capillary and get into the surrounding interstitial space. And this is what we call the blood-brain barrier. If we compare a neural capillary to a non-neural capillary, we can see that they're very different. The neural capillary has astrocytic foot processes, a continuous basement membrane, tight junctions that hold the cells together, and one additional property, an absence of pinocytosis. Non-neural capillaries or capillaries in the brain without an intact blood-brain barrier have none of these features. So contrast enhancement can be produced by increased vascularity, and contrast enhancement may be produced by an increase in permeability that allows contrast molecules that are initially injected within a vessel to leave the vessel and pass into the surrounding interstitial fluid outside of the vascular lumen. The brain is a special place, and we like to protect it from molecules that don't belong there by having the special properties of the blood-brain barrier. Thank you very, very much for your attention.